Hi everyone. Today I want to introduce this project to you. Superb. Superb this is a self-supervised learning project for voice. In this superb project, what are we going to talk about first? Let's start with how to apply self-supervised learning on voice-related task first. I believe that self-supervised learning should be familiar with how it works. It if you have taken my machine learning lesson, you must have been heard of BERT. BERT is trained on text. Self-supervised learning model. If you are doing something related to computer vision, then you must have heard SIM CLR. SIM CLR is a self-supervised learning model on image. So, how is that progress in voice data? Today I want to share with you the latest development self-supervised learning model on voice. Before we get stated, I will simply review self-supervised learning framework. We will use voice data as ours example. Nowadays, when we dueling with machine learning problem, we often separate it into two stage. The first stage is pre-training. In pre-training, we have a lots of unlabeled data. In voice data as an example, you can imagine that we clawed a brunch of voice data from the internet, like we download from YouTube. For those YouTube voice data that didn't have any subtitle as our label, what can we do to make use of them? We will use those in labeled data to train an upstream model. Training this upstream model does not require any labeled data. The purpose of that upstream model is to input a voice data. It will output a representations. That is vectorizing the voice data. About how to train an upstream model. Due to the time limit. We will just roughly go through the main idea. There are a variety of methods. Without labeled data. Can train an upstream model. For example. You can mask an audio segments. Let upstream model to. Recover the masked audio segment during training. This is likely what we do in NLP. BERT is using this kind of training method. Another way. For example, contrastive learning. Sim CLR on image is called contrastive. Contrastive learning. It can also be done on a voice domain in a lot of different ways. We will not list here. The most interesting part is that when we do this pre training for downstream task, the pre training is task agnostic, which means that when we are doing the pre training, we did not know this upstream will be fine tuned on what kind of downstream task. That is task agnostic. During training, we only use a brunch of unlabeled data to train upstream model. How will that upstream model to be used in other applications next? We do not know. In today's talk, we will apply the model, which is trained on phase one, called the upstream model. You may notice that it has many names on other literature, such as self-supervised model. And there is a popular word recently, is called foundation model also refers to the upstream model. So, in voice processing, this kind of upstream model, we already got several well-known model for that. It's a BERT model in voice. In NLP we have BERT and GPT. In voice processing actually has a series of upstream models that are ready to use. In pre-training stage, we already use a lots of unlabeled data to train an upstream model. We can further go to stage 2. In stage 2, you will have a specific problem to solve. That particular problem. For example, in voice application, you may immediately comes out. Speech recognition task. To transfer audio signal to text. Of course, voice recognition is not the only voice related task. We will introduce variety of. Downstream tasks in the following part. Back to speech recognition task. We have small amount of labeled data for speech recognition. It's a pairwise data with a voice signal and its corresponding sentence. You would use this small amount of labeled data to train a downstream model. That downstream model is often be much simpler compared to the upstreams. We usually only need a simple downstream model. If the upstream model is well enough, all you need will be a simple downstream model. It can solve the downstream task you want. In case of voice recognition, the downstream model will take a voice signal as an input. Output the speech recognition result. You will use a small amount of labeled data to train this downstream model. Some literature may purpose that. 
We can also use those labeled data to fine tune the upstream model. Here I use a dashed line to indicate that it is not necessarily to fine tune the upstream model. When we already have a bunch of upstream pre trained model, the literature results of those models showing that they have an excellent performance on voice recognition. There is the question are these models only specialist for OSER? Or they are universal on all voice related tasks. These models have been proved in the literature that they perform well on speech recognition. Are they only able to work on speech recognition? Or it can also work well on different voice related tasks. Are these models customized for speech recognition? Or it can also work well on any voice related task. You can use any of the upstream models, which is trained on large amount of unlabeled data, to handle any voice related task. To be more specific, we have introduced that we can apply downstream model right after the upstream model with small amount of labeled data, speech recognition labeled dataset to train the downstream model. It can have good performance. For the same upstream model, we can also apply it to other downstream tasks. If we are not doing speech recognition this time, we trying to do speaker identification instead. You will take some of the speaker identification data. To train another downstream model, this downstream model can also be attached after upstream model. Will that model also have an impressive result? If you ask me, these models are universal or specialists. A few months before, I probability tells you these models are more likely to be specialists. Why do I think so? Because you know that speech recognition and speaker identification, they are actually very different tasks. In speech recognition, we want our model to ignore the differences between speaker. Because different people speak on same word, their pronunciation is not the same. But you want the voice recognition system to ignore the differences between speaker. But if you want to do speaker identification, who's talking now is the most important thing you want to know. The system needs to be able to find differences between speaker. In conclude, voice recognition is to ignore the difference between speaker. Speaker identification is to find differences between speaker. These two tasks, these two goals, are conflicting to each other. If you do well in voice recognition, you may not perform well on the other tasks. Although I reasoned that these models may be specialists, we can still give it a shot to see how these models perform outside the speech recognition task. This is the idea of superb. Superb is a speech processing universal. Performance benchmark in short. The member in this project, not only from National Taiwan University, but also from the CMU, MIT, Johns Hopkins, Facebook AI, and LXT. In this year's Interspeech, we publish a paper about this benchmark. If you have any further question about the following experiment, you can check our paper published in Interspeech. The concept of superb is like we already have these upstream model. We take them to the same arena evaluating their performance. Superb will be like the Olympic on voice domain self supervised model. They do not just require doing well on a single task, they should be doing well on a decathlon. We want justify the model performance on different tasks. Here is the model we use on the competition. Some basic information. That you can see from this table tells that these models are different from each other. For example, the way of pre training. We listed the pre training on each model. We use a notation to represent different pre training way. Here we have at least six different pre training methods with different kind of combinations. Okay, let's introduce our category. First of all, we have some content related tasks. We have phoneme recognition. Giving the machine voice signal, and then identified phoneme sequence. If you do not know what phoneme is, you can treat it as something like KK phonetic. For keyword spotting, giving the machine voice signal, it can tell us which one keyword is used. Of course, there will be speech recognition, giving the machine voice signal, identified the corresponding text sequence. We also have query by example. What does query by example do? Query by example is trying to. Let's say there is a long audio files 
for example a news report, or your class recordings, you now want to search whether it contains something inside this recording, how to search this answer, when the input will be the question, you spoke, for example, you want to know this one hour long news report, whether it mentioned COVID-19 or not, you would say COVID-19, and then the machine turned this voice signal, with its corresponding TXT into account, to check whether it exists on this news report or not. After that the machine will automatically mark all the appear keywords in every part of the news report. That is query by example. For speaker dependent tasks, we have speaker identification. What speaker identification for is to input a voice signal. It needs to determine who the speaker is. We also have speaker verification task. Speaker verification is to input two pieces of voice. Machine needs to decide whether they came from the same person or not. Although speaker identification and speaker verification sound similar, but in fact these are two different tasks. As well as speaker diarization Speaker diarization is to input a voice into the machine. The voice may be a meeting recording that have multiple speakers in the same time. They may interrupt each other or even talking at the same time. So your machine should identify which part comes from speaker A, which part is from speaker B, and which part is speakers A and B talking at the same time. That is speaker diarization. For the tasks related to semantics, we have intent classification of voice. The input will be a voice signal. Model needs to understand what is intention behind. We have slot filling. In audio version, input a voice signal. It can captures the important information from it. Let's say, in a booking system, somebody wants to buy a ticket from Taipei to New York. Machine needs to figure out Taipei as the departure. And New York is the destination. For those semantic related tasks, the traditional way is to do voice recognition first. Turning the voice signals into text sentence. Semantic understanding will be on text level. But in here that will be an end to end model. Means that the machine does not do speech recognition first and then text understanding next. End to end model will not split it into two stages. Instead, we will use a unified model. That is an end to end model. End to end model will take a voice signal as an input and directly output the text understanding result. As well as emotion recognition. Input a voice signal to the machine. It needs to judge what is that voice signal talking about, what kind of emotion it is. To sum up, we will have 10 different tasks in total. We already introduced the participate in the competition. Also all the tasks in the competition. Let's begin the first round of the competition. In the first round of that competition, we set a relatively stringent restrictions. How stringent that restrictions is. The upstream model should be fixed. And we will not take any labeled data. To fine tune the upstream model, it will only include a brunch of unlabeled data in pre-training. After pre-training it will be fixed. No matter what downstream is. Maybe you have tried some model. For example, BERT in NLP. You will fine tuning that model on different tasks. You may want to ask, in voice processing, why don't we fine tune the upstream model like BERT? Fine tune upstream model should give us better result? In fact, that we have done related experiment on it. Fine tuning upstream model can give us better result. However, in the first section, we want to give a greater restrictions on these models. We want to increase their difficulty. To see what kind of performance. Under this situation. We give a limitation. Of the upstream model. Upstream model cannot be changed. On different tasks. Its parameters must be fixed. We'll take the last layer. Of upstream model. Use it into a different downstream model. On different task. For the downstream model. The network architecture is predetermined. For different upstream model, it will attach the same architecture of downstream model. The principle of designing downstream model is that we want these downstream model as simple as possible. The parameters should be as less as possible. Assume that a task can be solved using linear layer. We will use layer linear, but some tasks are more complicated, such as voice recognition, slot filling. It cannot be solved with just linear layer. Then we take one or two layers of LSTM to solve it. The principle is that 
downstream model should be as simple as possible. You might ask, why we have to set up such constraint? The reason is that, because of those limitation, then we can just use one upstream model to solve all tasks. Also these downstream model are deliberately designed to be very simple. If downstream model perform well on different task under this setting, what does that mean? It means that upstream model has to be impressive. In the pre-training stage, upstream model should learn how to extract universal feature in some kind. That universal feature can be apply on all of the downstream task. Maintain a good performance in the same time. To remind that upstream model is fixed parameter. All we need is one model for 10 different tasks. If a fixed model can solve 10 different tasks representative that this is a powerful model. It s feature can be used on all tasks. Moreover, those downstream are very weak. To solve the task, can't align on downstream model. Only downstream model is not useful. We have to count on upstream model's feature. Under the setting we introduced today, and what we just talked about, we can have good results on 10 different tasks. It means that we have a universals feature. For any kind of new task in the feature, we do not need to tune the upstream model. Directly use this model for the new task. We have that upstream model to generate universal feature for new voice related tasks in the future. You will be no worry. Directly use the same model upstream to solve this new task. Course, this is an ideal situation that we have not seen. Upstream model on voice. Their performance on the 10 tasks. If they perform well on 10 tasks, it means that these models are very powerful. In the future have a new task directly apply these models. Do not need to do anything like purpose a new design. Can it be possible? Let's check how is the result in first round. Here is the first round result. For each column, it represents a task. There will be 10 column in total. For 10 tasks, 4 content related tasks, 3 speaker related tasks, 2 semantically related tasks, 1 emanation related tasks. For each row, what is that for? Every row represents a different upstream model. First row is a traditional upstream model without using self-supervised learning. Self-supervised learning pumped directly feature past this FBank common voice in this field re direct pumping of the FBank feature to use it in the top 10 downstream task that we have try a variety of different upstream models to see how is that 10 perform on tasks. Okay, I in that chart. It is not easy to interpret because there are a lot of numbers. And for different tasks, the standard of appraisal is different. Some tasks are larger is better. Some tasks are lower is better. It is not easy to fully understand. This table in short period of time. We will sum up all of the result here. For those model behave worse than FBank. We will mask out the result in black. Black part means that the performance was worse than FBank. Self-supervised representatives is not come in handy. When upstream model is not come in handy in some task. What does that mean? The first conclusion is that in this form, the non-masked out place is much more than the masked one. It means that upstream models will come in handy in many cases. You will find that some of the tasks are not doing well, such as ASVSD slot filling to models. To those upstream model, it is not easy to perform well. You may find out that our Wave 2 VEC and Hubert. Wave 2 VEC 2.0 and Hubert. All we use are based model. We didn't not use large model. Why we not taking large model into account? We discover some strange issue. These large model performance in competition are very, very miserable. Even worse than FBank baseline. We can't not even put it into the table. Why these large model perform so bad? Maybe that is because in the first round of the competition, we restrict too much. So we now enter the second round of the competition. In the second round of the competition, we relaxed the restrictions of the game. What kind of restrictions we relaxed? In the first round of competition, we only use the last lay in the game. In the second round, we relax this restriction. Other limitations are still the same. We still using a simple downstream model, fixed upstream model parameters. The only adjustment is, when we use this upstream model, we are not only taking the upstream model, 
final layer of representation, but let the downstream model to decide which layer to use in upstream model for fine tuning. The reason of such design is because we notice that in a self supervised model, each layer may contain different information, the best information, the most important information for task, not always store inside the final layer. It may be in the middle layer. So we want to make downstream models have opportunity to choose which layer it want. For upstream model, the parameters is still fixed. How to let downstream model to decide which layer to use. Our solution is we extract each layer of the upstream model to perform weighted sum representation of each layer. After weighted sum process, output a new representation. Such representation after weighted sum will be the input of downstream model. For the weight of weighted sum of each layer, it will be trained together with downstream model. So you can think of the weight of weighted sum is the part of downstream model. Downstream model needs to learn by itself to chose which upstream layer to use. Next we will take a look at the second round result. You find in the second round has masked out part become even less. Indicate that weighted sum can let downstream model to choose which upstream layer for the task in this way can achieve better result. You can also find that there are several models which are much more better than FBank in most of the tasks include NPC Deco AR 2.0. Wave 2 VEC 2.0 series and Hubert series. They can both perform better performance than the FBank baseline. So there are a lot of self supervised leering models can do well on all tasks. That this is today's conclusions. It is a slap in the face for me. Assume that you ask me today whether these models are universal or specialists. I will tell you that amazing thing is that these models through a lot of in labeled data training. They actually are universal, at least in 10 different speech related talk. They have a better performance than F Bank we use in the past. About what is next in our study, how those model achieve that performance in pre training stage. We do not know what will be in downstream training. How those upstream to learn universal feature? That can be the problem we can study in the future. After all, we've been though. If you find that your trained voice self supervised model does not appear in this competition, what should you do? It doesn't matter. You can upload your own self supervised leering model to Superb Benchmark. If you want to know more about the further detail, you can check the QR code. Superb official website. I left it on the left side in this slide. In this time, the public leaderboard are already online. You can submit the results to the public leaderboard. After mid of October, there will be hidden dataset online on leaderboard. You can submit on it after October. The hidden data set of leaderboard. That is all for our superb plan. If you are working on the self-supervised leering model, you want not want to miss the AAAI 2022 self-supervised learning for speech and audio processing workshop. Submission deadline will be November 12th. The workshop website QR code will be in the right hand side in the slide. If you are doing self supervised learning related to voice, you don't want to miss this special issue of IEEE JSTSP. There is a special issue in IEEE JSTSP about self supervised leering for speech and audio processing. Deadline will be the last day of this year. The relevant information QR code I have posted on the bottom right of slide. To sum up, today, I want to tell you is if you are studying voice related, self supervised leering task to the end of this year, there are three things that you cannot miss to participate the superb challenge. Upload your results to the superb leaderboard. Second is attending the next year's AAAI workshop. Deadline is 12th of November. The third is submit your work to IEEE JSTSP special issue. Deadline is the last day of this year. That all we want to tell. Thank you very much. Thank you.